So this is the, the panel number two of our session on applying uh, asset-based and community-led development uh, at Coding Institute. Um, the panel two, uh, the title of the panel two is Women Organizing to Reduce Care Burden and Enhance Child Protection Using ABCD Approach. Uh, the presenters of this panel is uh, Yovita Mley, Nicole, um, Anna Marima, and Nambri's uh, Molel. Like right now, they are all together in an office where they will be uh, speaking to us. Um, so it's a little bit of a little bit of background of their uh, session. Um, asset base for community development has been an effective instrument for uh, instrument for women's economic uh, groups to articulate further their challenges and develop develop strategies to to reduce them. Uh, with ABCD, women groups were able to identify factors that constrain their economic progress. One being care uh, work, particularly for children under five years and sick people at home, and even those in hospital. They were able to identify from among themselves someone to take care of their children as they go for income generating activities. And uh, I'm very uh, glad and honored to receive, to welcome Jovita and uh, her team to speak about the experience. Jovita? Wow, thank you. Good, good evening or good afternoon? Good afternoon. <laughs> good morning yeah, to some of you. <laughs> yes. Um, Application of ABCD um, on the ground at community level. It has really helped. Actually, I'm Jovita Mlai. Let me introduce myself. Um, the, many, the executive director of Sasa Foundation. I got a benefit of being trained by CODI on ABCD approach. In the application of ABCD approach, we strengthened women in groups in terms of making them strong to kind of work by themselves in order to just wait someone to facilitate them. So uh, Sasa Foundation and the allies groups, women in groups have managed to go through identifying measures to reduce the Women, women's burden, especially care burden, but also manage to take care of children in a more effective way uh, because uh, women, women who are trying to, yeah, are you getting me? Yes, we are can you hear you perfectly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Women groups that are trying to get out of poverty by doing business, they have come across ways of uh, dealing with the household activities, household care work, at the same time do the business by identifying among themselves a woman who will be supporting in taking care of their children and the, those women will compensate the woman. Instead of her going for economic activity, they compensate her time based on what she would gain as she goes for business. So the woman will take care of the children and those women will go confidently to work outside their homes. At the, in, the, in the evening, they collect their children, they go home, but the good thing is the women will relax and do the business activities as much as possible. They become, they became more mobile in terms of looking for opportunities because they don't have that, um, uh, that worries that they used to have before because they used to leave the children at home just randomly or they would, uh, they would ask a neighbor to take care of a child or children, or if they have a sick person at home, 
they would just ask the neighbors to support them. But currently, the women visit them visit among themselves when they have a, a sick person, and they have kind of um, I don't know shift. They can divide among themselves who to visit so and so because she has a, a sick person at home. But also the other woman who takes care of the children, she would manage on food for the children because those women will contribute for the, for the colleague to cook for the children, but also they contribute for the woman to get someone to support because if the children are more than 10, then one single hand cannot take, cannot feed the kids effectively. But at the same time, the children are taught on small, small things. They start count, they, they have started counting, they have started learning on writing and uh, reading, but also playing. Uh, and whoever has any playing items, they can collect and uh, distribute to the centers. Uh, in doing that, we have attracted even volunteers. And I think when you when you started, we had it two around here that they were waiting to start. But when we, 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 we started late, they decided to go. But those are the ones that they normally come and support. They come from different countries. And here, the kids are now even getting opportunities to interact with the outsiders but also to break that um, the, the cultural practices where the kids are afraid of foreigners, now they are able to interact with them, but also the, the, the volunteers, normally teachers on what is the best way to deal with the children in terms of supporting the children to become more assertive, more confident, especially for the girls. So that has really been effective. We have managed to get uh, volunteers. Only two centers have now got benefit of getting volunteers. Uh, we are still uh, struggling to connect the other centers because the centers are about 12. Uh, that started after the ABCD, meaning that the women in groups were facilitated and they learned how, how to do it. And now, we have also one person, one lady, who came all the way from Bagamoy. Bagamoy is near Dar es Salaam to Arusha to learn the model on how Sasa Foundation has managed to have women groups run the daycare centers. So that she replicate and go to start it in Bagamoy. But also we have uh, um, Nemris, who is, a woman, who is a member of a group, a women's group women's economic group, but she is the one who has been um, running the daycare because she was picked because she's very, she's really confident and she's very strong. She is here, she will also talk a, a bit about the center, although she will use Swahili, but uh, the principal of Sasa Foundation, Anna Marima, will translate what she has said. And the lady from Bagamoyo, she can also have something to say. Unfortunately, Nicole, who was supposed to be here, she, she got um, um, something to do at that time, so she left the before. Uh, unfortunately, she could not make it. She just sent a message that she cannot make it to come back. But you will hear a lot from Anna. And Nicole is also a volunteer from Netherlands. She's, uh, she's working with us here to make sure the daycare centers, all the daycare centers, the 12 daycare centers are running properly. We have just finished um, preparing tools that we will be collecting that, we will be collecting data and information on how we are running, but also what are we lacking and how do we improve those centers that have started because of ABCD. I'm saying because of ABCD, before we used to know daycare centers will be run by someone and the people who have money will just pay and have their children there. But having um, identified that women can establish their own 
by having someone among themselves to do that and they are able to compensate time, that has been a very successful model. And the, we can even see some uh, few, of, um, few of those who came across the model, they thought it's good to come and learn so that they replicate the same. We are very proud of that. We are, we are saying thank you for ABCD, but we, we think we should uh, expound it to make sure women, women groups become more strong, but more effective, and even able to mobilize more resources um, as they have already joined forces to start something, they can now gauge to fundraise or to mobilize resources from outside. But the volunteers we see is because they have started and the volunteers are able now to come to add on the effort that they have put in place. So let me give it uh, to Anna so that she can talk a bit how she sees or how she, she feels when she's at Sasa and they, when they run, I mean, when women are behind her to run the daycare center. Anna, welcome. Hi, everyone. I think I should. Come close. Uh, I am Anna. I'm a principal at Sasa Foundation, and I'm dealing with the daycare. I'm running the daycare that is at Sasa Foundation at the center of all the daycare centers. Then uh, I am a teacher by profession, and I'm dealing with those children to whom their parents are there to go for the uh, economic activities, to make it productive as they are thinking of their children somewhere in a safe environment. We are dealing with the daycare in such a way that all the mothers or all the parents are aware that their children are at safe environment, getting all they require to get relaxed while they are doing the economic activities there. And also they are assured that they are in a safe or secured environment while getting healthy staff, healthy or uh, in a proper playing ground to get all what they require. We are here teaching children or preparing children to go to upper schools, that means the primary schools. Also, we are dealing with the babies who are here just coming for learning on how to cooperate with others, how to share stuff with others, how to get proper childhood uh, environment or childhood care, because sometimes they come from the very poor families where they are not getting proper hygiene or proper, uh, I don't know how to put it, proper food or proper environment for the children. So when they are at Sasa, they are very comfortable. They are very clean. They are very assured that they can be in a proper environment. We teach them on how to share, how to cooperate with everybody in the Sasa Foundation environment. And when the, the parents are back, we used to have seminars with them on how to deal with their children in a clean and clear environment, how to teach them to cope with the environment around them, to cope with the globalization, because we used to have volunteers from different countries and they learn different cultures apart from Tanzanian culture. Also, we teach them on how to be good leaders to their friends or to the environment around them. That's all what we do, we do with children. Also, we have a program with school, with primary schools that is called Empowering Girl Child. We do it in upper schools, not at Sasa Foundation, but it's under Sasa Foundation. We go to primary schools teaching girls and boys, but we are basing more on girls to make them to be a good lead, to be good leaders in their future, preparing them from childhood so that when they grow up, they know how to control the, the, the society around them, how to deal or how to, to monitor themselves while they are away from home and in their, in their home on how to, to make sure that there is no that segregation among a girl child and a boy child. So we do a lot, we are doing a lot. Within Sasa Foundation Compound, you have different women groups who are coming meeting here for their day-to-day -day activities, for their business plans and getting seminars on how to deal with their business in terms of knowing how to put 
uh, business system in an order, like getting loan, and when they get loan, how to deal with the loan. After dealing with the loan, how to record business transaction. After recording business transactions, how to know that here I'm going beyond expectations or I'm going to get, I'm getting profit or I'm getting loss in my business. So that's all what we do. We conduct seminars to teach them whether we have money, we have funding or we don't have funding, we try our level best to make sure that what they request, we can try at least to make sure that they are getting it. And also, not only giving seminars, we visit their business areas so that we can make sure whatever the kind of business is started with a woman among the women groups is surviving. If it's not surviving, what is the cause? And what can we do so that another woman can be uplifted from where she started and start gaining profit or all those kind of things? Thank you. Uh, Wellington, that's a nutshell on Sasa Foundation um, that uh, has been presented by Yana, who is always here. As you know, I run around like chicken. So Anna, Anna is, a, is the one who coordinates women, the mothers of the children. And every year we receive new children, but the number of women also add on. Because once a, a woman brings a child here, she has to be a member of the group. And that is the principle. And that is what the asset means. Meaning that we have the, 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 the group that is an asset. And when it comes to now, we need to do something in, together, including uh, child care, child protection. That is all we do. But also something that Yana, I think she forgot is that um, because we know uh, a child will be a future uh, nation, will build a, a, the, this nation in future, we engage a lot to the community leaders around. So when we invite them, they know they are coming to the center. They come with all the effort and the enthusiasm to engage uh, so that they understand when a child passes on along the street, she needs or he needs protection. So we have also used that opportunity that women understand the child needs protection, but also the community leaders participate uh, in supporting the women, um, the women in terms of uh, protecting children, but also uh, issues of environment. Just that uh, Sasa Foundation has become an asset on its own here, but also the women groups have become an asset. Uh, have become assets in the community, not just for the children, but also to educate. And especially when it comes that a child has been raped or something's happened in terms of where a mother has been, has uh, gone through violence at household level or outside. And the women groups are the ones that will discipline the man and that is really the asset. And last year we had a, we had a, <laughs> we had a women in group of uh, taking the husband who is a leader in the community, but they punished him. And of today is a, is a record that even a community leader can violate human rights, can also um, cause domestic violence. But the women group, uh, all the women groups have shown that, yes, we are here. We are not just for economic purposes, but we are here to support each other, to live peaceful environment from, it, from children, but also to the women, but also the students around. Because when we call the, the, the community leaders, we also share issues that we, go, we collect from primary school. Uh, the children normally talk about uh, what happens on the way, what are they facing in terms of safety, in terms of security. So we share with the community leaders. And that goes without any resource, without any financial support. We can just have a, an evening talk and the community leader, when we call him, he comes or she comes, we share, we talk a lot, even for two hours, then someone picks up an issue and that will 
prices go up and up and up, up to district level, because they have, they have sessions where they share issues. And Sosa Foundation has become really an instrumental uh, in the community. And without, with ABCD, it has really empowered us. Before we used to have, no, we don't have money for programs. We don't have money for this, but we just prepare tea and we have conversation with people, with women. And that has become very productive, very useful um, platform for addressing issues that are pertinent to community, to communities around, because there are many communities. Uh, and the women groups are also learning on how they can promote. The only thing that has been constraining women groups is that for them time, it's really an issue. You invite women to come to discuss those issues, quarter of them will come, but for us, we say that's enough. When they are in the market, they share a lot. So it, it becomes something good. But uh, again, the women, because the kind of business they do is very minor, it's very micro. So we don't push them much to come for meeting, to come for discussion. Because when you take their time, they look at you like, oh, you are now, you want to kill them. You want to make them that day in order to make a living. Because for them, it's kind of subsistence business. But it's still the subsistence that has really also impacted or impacted the community positively because they don't just look at their children, they also look beyond their children. Whenever they see a child roaming around, they will report, they can call Sasa Foundation because it's not necessarily to come here, but they can call and we take action. For us, it's just to facilitate the community leaders to know, but also the, the, the legal persons or the, the, the legal um, instruments that are here at, at the district level have to understand what is going on. But also the women groups having shown that they are able to deal with the children issues, the issues of violence, we trained them and a few of them about nine, about nine, nine have become paralegals, nine or nine. Yes, nine of them are paralegals around here, around the community. So something happens at the community level, they able to predict this one, we can take it to court to, to process through legal processes. But this one mm, is, is hard to, because the evidence is not really uh, obvious. So it has also helped in that, that we thought is because of application of ABCD. And the application of ABCD can really be uh, more and more and more. And with the ABCD, now you get, you get uh, connections, you, you get more networks, you get more uh, people to relate with, and that we learn more, but we also get support from those who get to know us, especially the volunteers who normally, who started coming after the COVID, now it's the volunteers have started coming, and we, we get that benefit of having volunteers around us. But I think let, let us have this woman who can talk a bit on how they run the, 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 the center, which is at a very micro level, very micro level. She will use Swahili. Uh, I think Anna or me can you translate and then we will have someone, uh, Josephine, who came to learn on the model and she will go to replicate it. Uh, welcome, Nembris, to share. Just talk Swahili, we will translate. Okay. My name is Nembris. Mimi naitua Nembris. Niko nimepata modo kutoka Sasa Foundation. Ambayo itu sababisha sisi. Kushirikiana na wanawake wanaishi katika mazingira magumo. Na wakaweza kujikusanya kwa pamoja ili kujipatia kipato cha kuweza kuendesha maisha ya watoto wao she said that through sasa foundation uh, the women who are living in hardship environment they could mobilize actually we mobilize with them they formed a group uh, to be able to do business and it, okay now she will continue saying how do they do it lakini baada ya hapo tukaweza kuanzisha pia 
kutokana na sasa foundation tukaanzisha kituo cha watoto wale watoto ambao wazazi wao wanaenda kujitafutia kipato uh, this is where now the group uh, having because for them they were just for economic they kept on thinking on money running for money 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 but then after the abcd uh, approach that was uh, adopted by sasa foundation we managed to facilitate the group to understand the importance of reducing the care burden care work burden and they started that the care center she is the one running it at that group what is the name of the group jinala group a uh, friday care uh, actually the group ya wanawake group anaka kwa pamoja inaitwa friday care the 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 group is a furaha women group and the day care that they started is called for that group lakini sasa watoto wetu wanaishi pia katika mazingira magumu kwa sababu wazazi hawana kipato cha kuweza kuwasaidia wale watoto na katika kituo ambao wanakaa wale watoto hakuna chakula kinachohitimu wale watoto wale washibe na hakuna chochote ambacho wazazi wanaweza kuchangia wale watoto yeah she she's saying for the for the group the women are very very vulnerable the kind of business they do is very micro very small so their income is also very much small that to pay the the woman but and to contribute for food it has become a very big challenge so they are still discussing on how they can run how they can make the children to live in a more comfortable way because it, the food for the children is a big challenge so the women have not been able to resolve that but at least they have started and they are running ndio basi tunaomba ikiwezekana ta volunteer tupewe ili waweze kuja kwa support wale watoto kwa kuwafundisha yeah for them they are um ask they are actually it has been a concern for sasa foundation that we we need to strengthen our F, i mean we need to put more effort in terms of mobilizing volunteers so that the the woman because for her she cannot have someone to support because the women of that group cannot contribute to the level that she can also get someone to assist her so for her she thinks uh, sasa foundation has to put more effort to have volunteers for them because we have managed to get volunteers only for two three three centers only so we are we are obliged to do that but we are also obliged to make sure that the group uh, uh the, the members of the group are much they do business in a more in a, in a more profitable manner so we also and this is the the very weak center among all those that we we have managed uh, that is the very weak one that um and that's why we picked here to, to kind of share despite that they are very very marginalized but they are able to run the daycare center despite of the challenges and what not uh, i think let me give a uh, um this one from back from bagamoyo to kind of talk a bit why was she pushed how did she learn about sasa foundation and up to now she's here hello my name is Josephine John i come from bagamoyo bagamoyo is near to dar es salaam so i came here to sasa foundation to learn more how can i learn also the day care and uh, enable the women to start the activities in order to manage their life uh, i am here almost for two weeks now learning more and i'm enjoying learning how the sasa foundation manage to stay with the children while their mothers doing uh, their activities So I'm with me much more happy if I can start the Sasa Foundation in Bagamoyo. Also I will be happy if I also Sasa will enable me to 
open the daycare in Mafia Island. As you know, Mafia Island is the island which uh, children, women, doesn't do any activity. They just stay home. They go late to school with the uh, age. The age will be more. Yeah, they they the, go to school when they are very elder. And they, they are going to be elder. So also schools in that island is not uh, available. That they go, they travel using a very distance to go to school. So small little children doesn't go to school early. They come with the old age. You see, you are you are working there in Mafia and you are prepared. So I'm working for Mafia for a long time, studying the life of the Mafia women, how much they are suffering because they have got many their marriage is not the, allowed the children to go to school. They with the air age, they go to madrasa. So they come to school. The problem of school become because they don't go to school with the knowledge to even how to write. But at Sasa Foundation, children can learn English, can know how to write numbers, to write alphabet, and they consult construction of words and they're making something which is better. Also women at Sasa Foundation can make their activities by sharing the, coming to Jovita calling the table bank. I think you know the table bank, table, table banking. banking, table banking. So they come with the little money, they starting with little money making, then they become what they borrow the money, which they contribute the money on the table, then every woman take that money and go to open the inactivity on a business, small business. They, after selling the commodities, they come with the profit. So the profit, they keep profit after one, one time, what? After a month. Not a mathematic. A year they break the, they, they share the profit which can enable them to get something, maybe to, to, to buy iron sheets, to pay school fees for their children, to buy clothes, to buy foods. That's all. So I am learning here. I'm still learning. After that, I'll go to study the women group, the girls group also, because in the mafia, more, I'm best match in the mafia, because we girls in the mafia, they have early marriage. After completing yes, primary schools or secondary schools, they got married. Or the mm, problem of pregnant, early pregnancy. So they didn't complete their school. So I'm actually learning and asking Jovita if we can do something about girls. Because me and Jovita, we have been to the same school. So we can learn here at Sasa Foundation, making how. It's the school, Sasa is a school where we can learn. That's why I say that your video and there we are learning to Sasa Foundation. So that all. Oh, thank you. Uh, actually, in short, uh, Josephine was working in Mafia and she retired. When she retired, she understood, uh, I mean, she, she, she saw the environment. And when she came to Bagamoyo, where Actually, TGNP, she learned about Sasa Foundation through TGNP. And that is where now she had to find ways of coming all the way here so that she sees, instead of starting something which she doesn't know how, because for her, she was a post office uh, officer. Yes, she was a post office officer uh, that she don't know, she doesn't know how to run women groups, how to organize women, how to make those women be able, accept to run businesses, but also to run a daycare center by compensating someone's time to, to be able to take care of the children, but also even understanding on how to, to, to link up with the girls in the primary schools so that they empower the girls and boys as how Sasa does. 
we normally we normally do it at sasa because we have really cultivated we have really built capacity and through the learning and the application of the approach and now strong strong enough to convince groups at community level that they can do something first you mobilize you organize them then have them understand what do they have what capacity they have and then apply the capacity they have meaning that the assets they have and then do something for themselves but also link them to be able to do it for communities not just to take care of your child but also take care of children whoever you see along the street is you is a child that means that needs to be facilitated to grow up as a as a decent person as a decent woman a capable woman and a confident woman let me end up here if some if there is anyone who has questions we can respond to the questions but also if you need more clarification we can clarify more maybe there, there is a lot that we have not said we can open up more if anybody would like to listen or to have more elaboration thank you very much thank you so much Thank you so much for the fantastic presentation, for the inspiring uh, project. Um, just like before we, we jump into the questions, <clears throat> I'd like just like for clarification, um, Sasa Foundation is placed in Arusha, right? Tanzania. Yes. Yeah, and uh, so we have the TGNP, Tanzania Gender Networking uh, Program. And uh, Sasa Foundation yes. is part of the network, right? Yes. Okay. And then under Sasa, Sasa Foundation, Foundation is part of the network to TGNP. And then under Sasa Foundation, there are different centers, including the daycare center. The, yes, exactly. So there are three levels. I think you understand, Doctor. Three levels. TGNP is broader and nationally operation, operating, although even SASA now we are becoming national kind of organization, but with a small, I mean, our capacity is still low, not like TGNP. And SASA now has umbrellas and as wide as possible at community level. But for us, despite that TGNP also has uh, the outreach or the, the community level groups. But for them, the, the, the setup of those uh, groups at community level are very different from those with the SASA. SASA is more on women and children to address issues of care burden and economic empowerment. But for TGNP, is the groups that are um, I empowered to deal with the policy and advocacy. I think you understand this. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, Yovita. Yeah. Uh, we have a question here. Um, Natalia, Natalia asked, sorry, Natalia Kosmina asked, uh, what are the main obstacles of implementing ABCD projects? Yes. That's a very, very valid question. Should I leave this to Anna? Anna? <laughs> you didn't get it, but let me talk a bit to you. I, I'm sure you will get. The main obstacle for applying ABCD is that when you are initiating that kind of discussion, because Sasa Foundation was here, we started in 2013, just to to, to have women train women groups in business. Um, and the others, we sub, when we get, actually those days, we used to mobilize fund, have fun, and mobilize women in groups and train them for them to engage in business. So we used to do that. Now with ABCD, we go back to the same, same groups that how are you doing? 
And when you go, at first they think you have money. You have money for a project. <laughs> Anna is laughing and everybody is laughing. So it, it, takes, it takes time for a group to see that, okay, despite that we don't have money, we can still do more. It took us six months to let groups start something. We agree on something, we agree, we discuss. As you're leaving, they still think, ah, Sasa Foneta is coming with money. Oh, you are bringing money to start that daycare. How do we employ someone? Then when we go back after a month, we ask, have you started? And we chose someone, you chose, because we will facilitate a session where they go up to choosing someone. Then when we go, they have not started. So, and we, we continue asking and, you know, um, uh, how do I say? Yeah, it's, it's about, it's kind of pushing them, not really pushing, but you, we, we kind of continue asking follow up so that they see that is for themselves because they have identified a, a, a problem of uh, child protection a problem of a child the, the women used to go with the children in the market and now even where the child will go for in toilet the, the facilities are not there in the market so they saw the problem but they don't want to deal with it they identified it and they say, ah, so we can do the daycare by ourselves. Ah, how? We need money. We need project money. Then we go back, say, but look at it. It's your child. And look at it, the benefit. Eh? When a child stays in a daycare for one, or for one year, the child might be ready to go to primary school. And the requirement here in Tanzania is that once you go to, once a child needs to join the primary school, that child has to be ready to join the primary school. The child has to go through a nursery or kindergarten. She, she or he cannot be enrolled in primary school without that. So the women at first were like, so we can run a daycare and the child gets out from here, the center to primary school. So, so, because Sasa Foundation, we are the guarantors, we guarantee them. We said, yes, the only thing we do as Sasa Foundation is group to register, like in Embrace, we, we registered them, uh, the, we registered the women group without much complication, because registering an organization in Tanzania is a bit cumbersome, but under SASA, we, we introduced ourselves uh, through these activities that we do the, at the community level, so when you go to district, to the council level, they accept us quickly registering women groups, so the the women in groups run those daycare centers under their registered groups. <clears throat> and the benefit of it is that a child finishes, because this is the third year now, um, the children this year, many of them gone to primary school and now they are seeing the benefit. And that's why now you see someone coming fully supporting by herself to go and start that thing. Although she's taking that kind of, it might be of an economic benefit for her because the women will be contributing to the center. And she, well, she likes being, she likes staying with the children. She likes very much, as I, I assessed her, for her staying here for two weeks. She likes staying, but I asked her, what is the motive behind? She said, I, I am sure, because I have retired, I don't want to work much. I don't need my effort to go just randomly. I would like my effort to go somewhere where I will see impact in the community. Although they will be paying little, but I will enjoy more to see contributing to the community, getting children in a more uh, safe place, safe and a protected place. So, the beginning is very hard. The concept of project to project is in the people's mind. But as you do and others see, it, it gets into people's mind and say, ah, this is a benefit. Although now another challenge is that 
it, it reaches a point the women are not able to contribute. Like in Embrace, what she said. Actually, it reaches a point the Sasa Foundation needs to support in Embrace. But we have to go to our own pockets because if you don't have project money, it's very hard. So you, you say now, instead of go to church and give thanks, <laughs> let me give thanks to this kind of centers. So that has been our model. Uh, and by, by the way, the challenges continue. We are still looking for ways to have this be more sustainable so that the women, and that is why we continue with the training on business, 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 so that women increase their income and support the daycare center in a more effective manner. Uh, I don't know whether I have answered fully. Anna, do you have anything to add on? Okay, yeah. Anna Thank said those are the things. Yeah. Fantastic, Jovita. Thank you. Um, Jovita, uh, could you talk a little bit about, I know uh, Sasa Foundation also work through the, the idea of knowledge centers, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I, we have a colleague here, Carrie uh, Ferguson. She has much interest on, on knowledge centers. Could you talk a little bit about the relationship between the daycare initiatives initiative and uh, the knowledge centers in the context of ABCD? Yes, uh, thank you, doctor. Uh, actually, the issues of uh, information uh, and knowledge um, it's very much central in all the centers that we, we are supporting and we are facilitating, we are mobilizing any kind of backstop. And that is what I said, currently we have a volunteer because we thought we needed to have a center with full, I mean, with the knowledge full of information that if someone comes and he wants to know exactly what have you been doing for the whole of this year? But what do you think the whole of this community around is missing or it has as a uh, kind of resource or asset the center should be able to give, and particularly for women. So we developed the tools that we, we have now currently in the office, and we have shared with all the centers to start document what have they been doing, starting with the children, then the women, take the, the practices, whatever they have done, however small the practice is, however small the lesson is from a woman or from a child or from a household so that they are able to document and put it in the, the, in, the um, in their center. Now, Sasa Foundation, because the Sasa Foundation, we call this, uh, we call this as Sasa Foundation Women Economic Empowerment and Information Center. That's how we call it. That we are, we are also getting um, the, the government policies and have them here. We collect whatever information from the government level that needs to go through to community, to, to, to train, not just the training. If anyone comes to be able to understand because I tell you, Wellington, Tanzania is, a, is, is one place that uh, majority of people do not know policy issues. Majority of people do not know whether they are supposed to go to the government and ask what, what have you budgeted for us this year? They don't. So they are also afraid. It's not just go walk to the government office. They are also afraid. So we, we, we kind of catalyze that situation by having those information, we have, a, we have a lot of leaflets, my goodness. Because of the network, actually, the of, our office is very, is very bad in terms of network. So we, we have positioned ourselves. I would have shown you the, where we have stored the leaflets, whatever, the documents, where the women in groups come. Sometimes some do not know how to read and write. So we, Anna said it that women are trained, but also we do, um, we have a program, we have a literacy program where women are taught, women and girls are taught on uh, how to read and write, but 
They are also taught on how to walk into government office, how to be confident, especially the paralegal team, how they walk into the court to be, to, to be able to participate, to be able to, to interrogate whatever processes that have constrained women, constrained a, a child who has been raped. So we, we have that kind of um, facility here and we are, we, we, are, we are approaching, we are somehow in the middle of the, 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 the evaluation assessment process where Danish, it's a Danish NGO that came to assess us and they say, no, this center needs a, a good printer, copy, a photocopy machine, they need internet, uh, and probably by November, end of November, we will have fully equipped here that people will be coming to browse. We will have like two or three computers where young people, especially the secondary and primary school children around the community will be coming here. We will have an expert who will teach them on how to browse, how to, to find issues, how to use the, the facility, but also even even women knowing how to use the, the, the online banking, financial matters online, we have prepared for that. And that was the, the area of Nicole. Nicole was to talk about that very well. Uh, we are praying that uh, that grant goes through so that we strengthen our information center to not just to educate women, but also the community leaders to know their work to know how they can apply online instruments and facilities to link up with the councils and the district officials to get information and quickly deliver to communities online, not necessarily to call for a, for a meeting, but just to do it online. So the center is preparing to start that and the Danish promised that maybe by December, we should have that project uh, on. We are not sure, we are still praying. We are not sure that will go through. We are still waiting for it and we are praying that because it was tedious to write that proposal, but we are praying that it will go through. We have already finished and we have submitted everything. And they, they promise, it's kind of, there is a positive indication of that. So it's, it is fully a knowledge center and that knowledge center meaning that the community leaders will learn on how to deal with the people, how they will lead in a more uh, proper manner by just using the center that will be here as an asset for them. Not necessarily to go for training far or to go for, or to pay for training, but just as, as we train ourselves because all of us need that kind of knowledge, need to equip ourselves to use more online methodologies to work, to, to link up with the communities, to link up the government, to understand the policies, but also the budget processes. The, we need to ensure that the budget process is fully uh, participatory by the community around here. We need to strengthen our ward so that it becomes one of the super ward in Arusha. We have started already by the women in groups supporting the women uh, who contested and she won. So we have a woman counselor here and she, she, she is behind the Sasa Foundation, meaning that we, we pushed and we, we campaigned for her, we supported her, we have her. We need to have women grow and become leaders, but we need even men who are leaders to understand the issues of women, issues of children, to be good leaders, not just because it's a man, we just deal with the roads, that's it. We need the leaders. The good thing is that, and Anna can share this, this has become really a center where any community leader, once she or his selected majority are men, they know this office more than even women, some of women who are very close around here because they walk in, they ask, they, they understand issues. Sometimes they come to learn here, how do I interrogate on budget? If we have time, we share. But if we don't have time, we can just give some synopsis. They go up with those synopsis and they give us feedback. This is what happened. 
So it acts like a knowledge center, but also where women can come and learn more on how they move on their, their lives, but on how the issues of nutrition, Anna said, they come to learn here. The issues of cleanliness, the issues of environment, and Nicole would have talked about it. We have uh, sensitized the women groups just for free on how they can live in a better environment, whether they are renting a small room, but we need to have a clean energy around here. So women study themselves that everyone said, I would like to plant five trees. And we said, this is a, a, the motivation um, kind of, the motivation around that is that we will, we will give them uh, the seedlings, but the tree, the, the what in the avocado trees, yeah, avocado trees. So we are going to give them avocado trees so that they go to plant and we will monitor them to see how they grow, but to, uh, to see how women understand issues of climate change, whether they see it, they have, okay, we talk, we talk about them, but when it comes that women run for economic, sometimes they tend to lose. So the office used to backstop and push the women to keep on remembering the issues. And I think um, that has really helped. What we are proud of is that Sasa has really become a center of community. And that is the, the spirit of ABCD. Despite all those challenges, but we, we, we are happy that a little that goes to the community, it has really uh, helped us to, to be proud of that. And especially when you see someone from far coming to learn the model, uh, it, it has really motivated us, meaning that we, we can work more and more and more. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank you, Yovita, and thank your team for the amazing presentation, for the amazing contribution. Thank you so much. It was greatly inspiring for sure. Uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you. Yeah, our the plan. challenge with our office, when I turn a phone a bit, the network goes off. It was great.